All right, back with another diorama from Lizard Landscapes. We've got a beach diorama with a removable wave so you can have calmer waters. So created this with a uh, prototype. Uh, never done this before, but uh, I knew I was gonna be using a lot of resin, a lot of expensive resin. So I would experiment first on the uh, prototype and then move on with those ideas uh, on the main project. So created this with kind of an interesting angle to uh, the water, uh, basically mimicking the angle of that back slope of the uh, land portion to the front of the water. Even created a, a little small diorama. I knew I was going to have some leftover resin, so uh, I will show how I created this uh, later in the video. But let's go ahead and get started in creating this beach diorama. So you want to make sure that you are near an open window. So I'm going to be using some hot wires from the hot wire foam factory. You want to make sure that you have one of these professional dust masks. So with each project, I usually start off with a sketch, a little basic sketch. So this is how this project started off. And then uh, measured out what I want the base of the land portion to be, and then using some uh, leftover XPS polystyrene, cutting out some, some shapes, tracing along so I get the exact width, but two other uh, pieces that are longer, and uh, sticking them with some pins, so holding them together with some pins so they are not glued down, just in case I wanna make a, some sort of change. So drawing out a profile of how I want the beach uh, shape to look. And then going ahead and using one of the hot wires, removing everything except what's within that uh, profile drawing. So I'm then taking uh, varying degrees of uh, sandpaper and trying to smooth out all these edges. This took quite a long time, but uh, finally got it to uh, where it was looking uh, smooth. And so even have a little uh, beach dune topography to the top there. So then uh, taking apart, removing the pins, and applying some glue, and gluing these uh, three sections together. Then filing down the sides, sometimes you'll, they'll be a little bit uneven. And even have this little section where there wasn't quite enough uh, to even this out. So taking a little leftover piece and then uh, tracing around uh, that shape, cutting that out, applying a little bit of glue, letting that dry before uh, using some sandpaper to kind of smooth that out, blend it in with the rest of the landscape. So I even created this little piece that felt as if I needed the uh, uh, end of it to extend a little bit uh, into the water. So gluing that down, got some pins uh, holding that in place. So once that is dry, then sanding it to kind of blend it into the rest of the landscape and then breaking apart the uh, bottom of it so that you've got more of like an organic uh, move into the, uh, the resin. And then uh, painting on like a basic sand color, applying some sealant and then sprinkling on a little bit of fine grain sand. and applying that to the sides, and then uh, repeating the process. And then decided I needed to uh, paint this in a much lighter sand color. So painting that on there and then applying the same sealant and going through uh, those same steps of sprinkling on uh, fine green sand. And then trying to work on what is the ocean floor and gluing down some rocks and little pebbles and then painting that 
starting off with a uh, aqua color and then progressively getting lighter and ultimately blending this into uh, the same sand color. And then uh, a good way of blending these two right at the waterline is using a clean wet brush and blending uh, those two acrylic paints together. And then painting the uh, bottom of uh, the ocean floor a little bit darker to suggest more of a depth in that area. Then going back in and trying to repair some of the sections where some paint uh, dripped down. And then gluing in some seaweed. So just using some two different types of model railroad uh, foliage. And then going over that with a very light wash of uh, aqua color. So creating the barriers to be able to hold in all of that resin. So I've got some cardstock trying to figure out where the water line is going to come up to on shore. And then tracing that back uh, edge. If you remember from the beginning of the video, the, the water has got that uh, angle that I'm trying to mimic from the... Uh, the land portion. So I've got a couple of different layers here just so that that is more rigid and strong. I'm going to cover this in uh, clear packing tape. So you want to have the resin curing up against something that is smooth. So it could be packing tape or a lot of people use very thin like polystyrene sheets. And then using a couple of different uh, pieces to be able to have the uh, front part and then using some uh, paint bottles to kind of hold all of that together those three sections and just literally gluing uh, the project to these barriers because everything has got to be uh, watertight so then applying some sealant to make sure that there's not going to be any leaks so getting in to the uh, corners and the edges. So once that is dried for like 72 hours doing uh, a test to see if there are any leaks, so I've got about a half inch to an inch kind of work up uh, slowly. And if there is a leak, like at this point, I'll know it's from that depth downward. Just makes it easier to be able to troubleshoot if you do have a leak. So then uh, pouring in another half inch to an inch, testing for leaks, and then ultimately getting to where I'm pouring right up to the water line and letting that sit for a little bit. Did notice this issue with the weight of the water kind of making that barrier uh, bow. So you can either use a stronger barrier or I'll show later in the video what I did to uh, counteract that. So making sure there aren't any leaks and then moving on to the resin stage. So using three drops of an aqua colored enamel paint uh, to color um, the resin. So basically this is a resin that is one part, one bottle to two parts of another bottle. So I'm coloring all of what will wind up being uh, three pours for the second bottle so that there aren't any uh, recognizable seams in each pour, if that makes any sense. So putting the project into a 10 gallon aquarium, just in case there are any leaks. And this is how I corrected that bowing uh, situation with the weight of the water. The putting like a pallet up against there and just kind of having it match the angle of where that, uh, that barrier is at and completely fix that. So pouring in uh, the two parts to the resin and then I'm going to stir this for about 15 minutes. So going ahead and doing the first pour here. And I let each pour sit for about 22 hours so that they would be able to kind of blend with each other. So doing the second pour, this is 22 hours later. And doing the third and final pour.
and kind of coaxing the resin before it sets to have it uh, exactly where I want it as far as how far it's going to creep up onto uh, the beach shore. So putting uh, this little uh, crudely made uh, covering so that nothing falls into the resin and uh, knew I was going to have some leftover resin, so created this little half moon shape with a fade from aqua to a sand color, pouring that leftover resin up to that little water line. So I'll show later how I uh, kind of flesh that out. I'll let that sit for about a week and come back to it. So be sure and watch this intermission. All right, time for another intermission. This is where I go completely off topic and try to motivate those who haven't found God yet to start searching. Years ago, I did a question and answer video with pastors where one of the questions was, what is the argument against Christianity that you run into the most? One of the pastors replied by saying that non-believers think Christians are hypocrites and thus use that as a reason to not believe. I've heard this before and I've even felt this before. The classic response to this complaint of I don't believe or I don't attend church because Christians are hypocrites is come on in. We could always use one more. That's not meant to insult anyone. It's meant to suggest that we're all in the same boat. That's why the church exists is because no one is perfect and we're all in need of Christ on an ongoing basis. I think there is this misconception that once you accept Christ and become a believer, then all of a sudden you're perfect and never have any challenges. The Bible never says that. In fact, it says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. There are several things to take into consideration. One, you don't know if someone you consider to be a hypocrite and a Christian is taking Christianity seriously or is actually a Christian to begin with. I think there are a lot of people in the church who are just going to church out of habit from when they were a kid. They've never actually asked Christ to change them or experienced true repentance. Anyone can call themselves a Christian and doesn't necessarily make it so. I can call myself a doctor. You're not necessarily going to let me operate on your knees tomorrow. You've got to see the trappings of one being a doctor, or in this case, a Christian. Plus, you don't know what someone has had to grow up with meaning one person through no fault of their own could have had a terrible upbringing, meaning it would potentially take more time to unravel or undo the effects of all that abuse. Another person brought up with the right discipline and love would understandably make faster progress in their transformation. But even someone who has been raised properly and is taking Christ seriously is not immune to making mistakes or letting people down. The Bible never says you'll be perfect, so if you find yourself commenting on how a Christian isn't perfect, you're only supporting what Scripture says. You want to go to Christ and Scripture to prove the validity of Christianity, not the followers of Christ. If you go into a classroom, do you go to one of the students to find out the truth about the subject being discussed, or do you go to the teacher? The point is to look to Christ as a litmus test as to whether or not Christianity is true, not the followers of Christ. Now, should Christians provide a good example of how to lead the Christian life? Of course. And they should also not use grace as a license to sin. But I've learned in all my years that every single Christian I've come into contact with is on a slightly different path and progressing at a different speed. This means you're going to get a whole bunch of different results when you interact with one. A friend of mine recently told me he was thinking of leaving his church and might start attending the one I attend. He said this because he was having some issues with his church and the people in it. I told him he would probably just find similar issues, if not new ones, at the church I attend. I told him he should just probably stay at his own church because they need him there. The point is there is no perfect church or people. That's why the church exists. So don't let someone else who is having a bad day or in reality is not actually a Christian ruin the greatest thing that could ever happen to you. The point of these videos is really to motivate you to do your own research and ultimately realize that this topic is worthy of your time. Check out all of the amazing testimonies online of people who have been to heaven and hell 
and whose lives have been transformed from following Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. So, after about a week, uh, removing these barriers, and some of them came off uh, kind of easily, and others um, had a little bit more trouble. This one left some scarring. So, and then here is the uh, that smaller diorama. So you just, I just used a pair of scissors to cut into the cup, and just tearing it apart, and it just kind of pops out. So I'll work on that later. And then sometimes with uh, pouring resin, you'll get this uh, these little extra issues. You just have to cut those away with um, a razor blade. So this is how it's looking, sort of cleaned up a little bit. And starting to create that little tiki hut that's on the beach. So using little twigs and basically building up a uh, basic frame so that I can uh, glue some twine onto that, make it look as if it's got this roof made out of grass. So gluing on some uh, twine onto that to sort of flesh out the roof. and starting to create the palm trees. So just using paper here, cutting out the leaves, cutting in some uh, texture, giving it a slight bend, and then coloring it used a, a couple of different uh, shades of green. Dry brushed it a little bit, so that's how those are looking. And then gluing on the uh, leaves. And then uh, creating some texture, uh, painting on some the suggestion of some bark. And then creating that first ripple. So I'm using a high gloss glue, that first ripple that comes up onto the beach. And sort of trying to blend that in with the, uh, the rest of the resin. And then creating a second layer to build that up a little bit. So here's how I created the wave. I've got, I'm using the prototype and used all of these different ideas. Couldn't quite figure it out for quite some time. And then ended up uh, for the base, realizing it probably should be like a removable wave. Uh, got this base where I'm using plastic that you would get at like an office supply store. So I've got a couple of different layers. I'm gonna glue those layers together. And then for how the wave is like going to turn over and crash, I'm using plastic that you would find in an envelope. So if you get a bill in the mail, how you're able to like look through and see your address, that's this type of plastic. For whatever reason, that plastic worked uh, perfectly. So using something like cylindrical uh, for it to be able to hold its shape, uh, just in this case using a Gorilla Pod, but wound up using a uh, magic marker, but applying some glue to the outside of that. So I'm not gluing this to the Gorilla Pod. The glue is on the outside and it'll just be, the plastic will be glued onto itself. And then using a uh, weight to just hold that in place while it dries. So it just comes right off because it's again, not glued to whatever you're using, and you've got this curve going over, suggesting a wave crashing. So I wound up using a magic marker. Thought it was more appropriate, I guess, to the scale of the uh, diorama. So I'm gonna glue this onto the plastic. So this is not being glued onto the diorama, it's onto that uh, base plastic. And using some glue, uh, high gloss glue, to kind of suggest some shape to the wave as to how it's crashing over and using a different product i will have all of the materials in the description below but using a product to be able to build up the back of the wave so that it's coming from uh, the ocean crashing over so once one layer is dry building up another layer to the point where i'm using this to extend the wave all the way to the 
the sides of the project. So you can kind of see it there, hopefully looking more like a wave crashing over. And once that layer is dry, doing the same thing, having this, uh, the sides of it extend uh, to the edges of that plastic. And then painting on what will be the uh, second ripple that washes up onto the beach. So just doing the exact same thing with this high gloss glue and kind of pushing it back into the resin to try to blend it. So using some of that same stuff it took to create the, the back of the wave creating some uh, texture right onto the, uh, the plastic, the wave attachment. And then using some acrylic paint. So starting off with like a off white, trying to uh, paint in the um, white foam and ultimately getting to where I'm using pure white on the very edge of that ripple that washes up onto the beach. Doing the same thing with the second ripple. And then doing this as well to the uh, wave attachment using some white acrylic to create some, uh, some foam painting onto the wave itself there. So there was no coloring to the wave. It's just picking up the color, the aqua color of the resin that's underneath it. So putting in some fine detail of uh, some really small uh, foam and putting in some cotton. So the wave crashes over and uh, this is you know, suggesting that water spraying up and uh, mist happening because of uh, this wave crashing. And putting in some subtle detail, found that sometimes it, was, uh, it looked better when I would just kind of smudge it away with my finger to kind of get away from it looking as if I had applied it with a paintbrush. So then going over all of the acrylic white paint uh, with that same high gloss glue it took to create those ripples to kind of reestablish that wet look because white acrylic paint will, uh, will dry very dull. And, and so, so doing this uh, as well to the uh, wave attachment. Then taking a pin and trying to figure out where the posts of that uh, little tiki hut is going to be and uh, gouging a little hole in there so it's got a way of fitting into there. So installing that and then eventually gluing it. So you're really trying to figure out the composition of uh, where everything is going to be, you know, what looks right, changing the trees every now and then to uh, figure out where you're going to glue everything down. So using some of that same glue that is high gloss, creating that, those ripples if you Remember from the beginning of the video, when the light hits it just right, you see that kind of glistening look to the water. So put on two layers of this on each part, so the resin and the uh, wave attachment that I'm working on there. And then putting on some beach weeds uh, to the very small beach diorama. I've already put in, as you can see, some uh, white foam, so gluing in some beach weeds and then uh, a pebble or two here and there. And then doing the same thing with the, uh, the bigger project. So I've got green twine and creating little clumps and then gluing the base of those together to kind of trap them. And then once that glue is dried, uh, using a razor blade to kind of pop those up, trimming that glue away. And then on the main piece, using like a small knife and gouging in a little, little hole there, using some glue and installing some beech weeds. And finally gluing in the uh, palm trees. And putting in some details like uh, little pebbles, little rocks here and there to kind of complete the look. So there you have it beach diorama with a removable wave and I really created this with kind of the idea in mind that you would have this on your desk at work so you can kind of escape to the beach so be sure and check out uh, the rest of the channel for many more diorama videos and thanks for watching